Unlocking the Enigma, CIA's secret manuscript on pole shifts, mass extinctions, and the untold Adam and Eve saga. Back in 1966, a distinguished scientist penned a tome brimming with knowledge that could reshape our world. However, this treasure trove remained shrouded in secrecy, classified by none other than the CIA. The public was oblivious to its existence until a few years ago when, by a twist of fate, it was declassified. But there's a catch, the CIA unveiled only 57 out of the original 284 pages. Those 57 pages had been meticulously sanitized, as they put it. Now, what could be so spine-tingling about this text that it warranted 60 years of concealment? And why do they still keep most of it under wraps? Well, the answer lies in the words of the man behind it all. This man paints a harrowing picture of the apocalypse, and no, this isn't your typical doomsday tale with a cheerful ending. But hang on, we're here to unravel the story without sending shivers down your spine. In 1966, a former engineer from McDonnell Douglas, Dr. John Thomas, released a book titled, The Adam and Eve Story. At first glance, you might think he's trying to be playful, but in reality, he's deadly serious. This book delves into nothing less than the end of the world as we know it. You might wonder, is this one of those stories that will have us tossing and turning at night? Well, I promise you a mix of intrigue and revelation. Dr. John Thomas presents compelling evidence of an impending shift in Earth's poles, heralding a cataclysmic event. What's more, he asserts that these pole shifts are no fluke, they follow a distinct pattern. At regular intervals, a catastrophe of epic proportions wipes out nearly all human life, and we find ourselves back at square one, in a Stone Age-like scenario. According to Thomas, our modern civilization is just the sixth in a long line of advanced societies to have graced this planet. There may even have been more civilizations in the past, but the farther back you go, the murkier it becomes. You see, Dr. Charles Hapgood, who was a proponent of shifting continents, faced skepticism in his time. Yet, in a twist of fate, his theories have been validated. Our continents do indeed move, drifting apart and colliding over eons, a process that has unfolded for nearly four billion years. Remember Pangaea? It was the colossal supercontinent that eventually splintered into the landmasses we recognize today. So, there you have it, a clandestine manuscript that offers insights into the profound mysteries of Earth's history. Join me as we embark on a journey of discovery, delving into the secrets that the CIA tried to keep hidden for decades. It's a story that will leave you astounded, and perhaps, a tad more enlightened about the enigmatic forces that shape our world. Unveiling Earth's hidden history, the tale of Gondwana, Pangaea, and the mysterious Pyrie Reese map. Before the era of Pangaea, there was a colossal supercontinent known as Gondwana that existed for a staggering 400 million years. Even before Gondwana, there was Panosia. Now, we're venturing deep into history, some 11,600 years ago, back to the Younger Dryas. But let's pause for a moment because we're about to dive into the enigmatic world of the Pyrie Reese map, a riddle that has perplexed scientists for centuries. On the Pyrie Reese map, a remarkable sight emerges, the outline of the continent of Antarctica. However, 
Here's the real head-scratcher. Antarctica wasn't officially discovered until 1820, yet Pyre Rees claimed that the information on his map came from sources far older. Imagine, if Charles Hapgood's notion holds true and the Earth's axis was indeed shifted by 15 degrees from its present position, Antarctica might not have been a frozen expanse as we know it today. Hapgood held a belief in an Ice Age civilization long forgotten. In one intriguing chapter, Hapgood elaborates on what we might experience during such a dramatic pole shift event. But before we delve into that, you might want to take a breather, perhaps even grab some fresh underwear, yes, you heard me right. Hapgood's descriptions can leave you on the edge of your seat, so heed his advice and be prepared. As we continue, a low rumble that's almost inaudible gradually evolves into a thunderous roar, like no earthquake you've ever imagined. In California, the mountains sway like delicate ferns in a breeze, while the vast Pacific Ocean rears back and forms a colossal mountain of seawater, towering over two miles high. The atmosphere itself seems to join this cosmic dance. According to Hapgood, when the pole shift occurs, the Earth's air and water continue to spin, but the land masses come to a grinding halt. In many places, the Earth's molten sublayer surges forth, spreading like a sea of white-hot, liquid fire. Within a matter of hours, all traces of our civilization vanish, and the great cities of Los Angeles, San Francisco, Chicago, Dallas, New York, and Boston are relegated to the status of mere legends. Barely a stone remains where millions walked just a few short hours ago. It's a spectacle that defies imagination. Now, picture this. As the shift unfolds, the Earth's land masses stop moving, and consequently, the sun appears fixed in the sky. This means that one side of the Earth will experience scorching heat, while the other plunges into bone-chilling cold. We're talking about temperature drops of a mind-boggling 180 degrees. Even the warmest corners of our planet will find themselves at a mere 80 degrees. In this topsy-turvy scenario, Antarctica, once relegated to the icy south, now finds itself positioned near the equator. It blossoms with lush, tropical vegetation. Hapgood's predictions hint at a colossal 90-degree shift in the Earth's axis, essentially flipping our planet on its side. The poles migrate to the equator, and the equator takes up residence at the poles. In the aftermath of this cataclysm, New York lies submerged beneath the Atlantic, concealed beneath an unfathomable layer of mud. The same fate befalls San Francisco, Los Angeles, Chicago, Dallas, and Boston, not a trace remains. The cataclysm leaves behind a handful of survivors, thrusting them into a new stone age. Throughout history, flood myths have emerged from various corners of the world. Ancient Hawaiians, the story of Noah's Ark, the Sumerians' epic of Gilgamesh, and countless others from Europe, Asia, the Pacific Islands, and native tribes across America all recount tales of a great flood. It's a narrative that sweeps the slate clean, giving civilization a chance to start anew. Now, one myth could be dismissed as mere folklore, but when two or three or even forty different cultures share similar flood myths, it starts to look less like mythology and more like a remarkable piece of our shared history. So, stay with me as we journey deeper into these mysteries that have endured the test of time, 
uncovering a history that might be far more extraordinary than we ever imagined. Well, folks, we're diving into a fascinating subject today. When we think of great floods, the end of the last ice age usually comes to mind. And that's precisely when John Thomas places one of these massive deluges. He throws out the intriguing date of about 11,500 years ago for the Younger Dryas event. Before that, we're talking about a flood approximately 18,500 years ago, coinciding with the time when the Bering Land Bridge submerged. And further back, 29,000 years ago marked the end of the Wisconsin Glacial Period and an even older flood, 43,800 years ago. Now, the concept of global floods isn't too controversial, we do have evidence of these events throughout history. But what stirs the pot is the assertion that advanced civilizations may have existed before each of these colossal events. That's a game changer. The real kicker here is the idea that some ancient sites exhibit signs of rapid water erosion, particularly the enigmatic Sphinx. If that's the case, it suggests the Sphinx's creation predates the last flood, which was 6,500 years ago. That's even before the rise of the Egyptian civilization. Archaeologists, of course, aren't thrilled with that notion. And they're even less thrilled about the possibility that the Sphinx might be over 10,000 years old. But there's more to this mind-bending theory. We're not only talking about floods, but also a cataclysmic pole shift, accompanied by a colossal mud flood and even the legendary lost continent of Atlantis. Yes, you heard me right, Atlantis. Chan Thomas lays down some pretty audacious claims in The Adam and Eve Story. In his description of Atlantis, he portrays it as a city with concentric rings and a waterway flowing through. Now, even among Atlantis enthusiasts, there's debate. Some argue it might be a natural formation rather than man-made. But what's truly intriguing is that around the world, we find vast ripples in the landscape, akin to rolling hills but on a colossal scale. These formations, about 50 feet high, equivalent to a five-story building, were shaped by water, lots of water. It's a sight to behold, and one of the strangest things out there. Now, Atlantis isn't the only victim of this ancient disaster. On the other side of the globe, we have the story of another lost continent, the fabled land of Mu. Mu was described by both Augustus Luplongin and James Churchward, who translated ancient texts from the Maya and India. These distant cultures, situated on opposite ends of the world, speak of a vast continent in the Pacific, stretching from Hawaii in the north to Easter Island in the south. It even reached as far west as Japan's islands. According to legends, Mu boasted an intricate irrigation system that supplied fresh water to its residents far and wide. Easter Island is considered a remnant of the eastern part of Mu, and the colossal Moai statues there are no small matter. You see, most folks are unaware that these statues possess bodies buried deep beneath the surface. Now, here's the conundrum, did the statue builders first dig holes and then bury these colossal figures? Or was there some mysterious ancient engineering involved? The intriguing part is that Polynesian languages show similarities to Greek, and on Easter Island, they worshipped a sun god known as Tama. It's fascinating how connections keep popping up between cultures worldwide, 
Nostradamus and Edgar Cayce both made eerily similar predictions over 20 years ago. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? Now, we've covered the core points of the Adam and Eve story. If you're itching to explore this further, there are links below for the full book. But now, let's address some of the questions that may be racing through your mind. First, let's clear the air about a few things. I've narrated the story based on what's present in the book, as well as in articles and videos. This whole journey started with an unexpected UFO expert in a 90s documentary, and even made its way onto Johnny Carson's show in April 1965, alongside none other than Ava Gabor. Yep, you never know where these tales will lead. Dr. John Thomas authored a handful of books covering a wide range of topics from UFOs and ESP to natural childbirth. Yep, you heard me right, natural childbirth. Now, don't let your mind wander there. Some other tidbits that have been floating around about this story are that the original book had 284 pages, but the CIA only released 57 of them. Well, hold on, that's not exactly accurate. Classified as it may be, the document is actually an interoffice memo containing a shopping list of tools and car parts, along with a folded up article snippet from People magazine. It's quite random, isn't it? My best guess is that this document landed in the hands of a caseworker and it was classified more out of routine than anything else. In 1966, the same year the book was classified, Dr. Thomas was busy at McDonnell Douglas, working on UFO and anti-gravity technology, and he also served as a project engineer at Bell Labs, focusing on missile guidance systems. Dr. Thomas makes some bold leaps in his work, pulling ideas from other catastrophic theories, such as those by Charles Hapgood and Emanuel Velikovsky, and then cherry-picking his favorite parts without providing specifics. Take, for instance, the concept of the ice caps knocking the Earth off its axis. This idea originates from Hapgood's earlier work. But, it's worth noting that after collaborating with esteemed scientists, including Albert Einstein, Hapgood issued a subsequent book explaining where he got it wrong. However, Dr. Thomas sticks to his guns and... Well, folks, today we're diving into the intriguing world of Dr. John Thomas and his unconventional work. He had chapters dedicated to ESP, UFOs, and even angels. But I have to tell you, this doesn't read like your typical scientific treatise. It's a bit of a hot mess, to be honest. Dr. Thomas leaps around without a clear narrative, as if he gathered all his scattered ideas over the years and decided to throw them into one final book. So, Here's the big question, was Dr. John Thomas a serious researcher? Well, the short answer is no. But does that mean there's no evidence to support some of his claims? Not necessarily. Let's break down some of the intriguing points he makes. Dr. Thomas delves into some seriously wild scenarios. He talks about sea levels rising hundreds of feet and temperatures plummeting rapidly, freezing everything solid. And he brings up the curious image of woolly mammoths discovered frozen mid-meal with buttercups in their mouths. Now, believe it or not, this is true, we have found mammoths in such peculiar positions. But freezing a mammoth in a snap requires extreme conditions, no doubt about it. 
According to Thomas, seismic activity is one of the culprits behind Earth's axis shifts. But here's the thing, these shifts aren't something we should be losing sleep over. Now, the real deal lies in the magnetic poles. You see, the Earth's magnetic poles have this habit of flip-flopping, switching from north to south and back again. Geologically, this happens quite frequently, every 300,000 years or so. But the catch is that we haven't witnessed this shift in almost 800,000 years, so we're overdue for a change. How do we know about these flips? Well, when lava cools down, it leaves behind a record of past magnetic field orientations, much like a timestamp tape recording. But don't hit the panic button just yet. Life will go on. Animals that rely on geomagnetism for navigation might get a tad lost, but they're resourceful creatures, and they'll adapt in a generation or two. As for the ones who couldn't care less about magnetism, well, it'll be business as usual for them. The geologic records show that major die-offs don't typically accompany pole shifts and our species has weathered a few of these shifts over the past three million years, we're still here, after all. Now, here's the real kicker. Our ancestors never had satellites, GPS, or airplanes. So, when the magnetic poles dance around, it could send our tech into a tailspin. But don't fret, code can be rewritten, and tech can be rebooted. However, the climate will become a bit of a wild card. It's going to be unpredictable, to say the least. But the biggest danger lies in our power grids. If solar activity hits an all-time high, it could potentially knock out all electricity on Earth for days, weeks, and maybe even months in some regions. Civil unrest would be an understatement, my friends. Now, back when Dr. John Thomas unveiled the Adam and Eve story, it got brushed aside as pseudoscience. But fast forward some 50 years, and you'll find that many of his claims can be substantiated. It's remarkable how time can shed new light on old ideas. If you want to dive deeper into some of the topics mentioned here or learn more, just head over to yfiles.com. A big shout out to our amazing patrons who've made this channel possible. Your support keeps the wheels turning. Okay, enough of that. Let's wrap this up before I break into a song. Until next time, stay safe, be kind and keep on exploring. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share with your friends so we can keep making them. For more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and remember to click on the notification bell. Also, be sure to check out our other videos as well. Thanks for watching.